All right, then I go. Oh, you did it already. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, it's your old pal Voltaire taking over. Yes, the inaugural stream. Yeah, awesome. Yes, we um, finally got him to stream. <laughs> yeah, Voltaire's a. You're an official member now. You were always a member, but you get you know. Uh oh, watch watch out. What's he gonna be doing? Uh, well, take it away, Voltaire. What do we What do we do? What are we discussing? Well, I'm not gonna get the channel struck like some people. So oh. that, that's not the thing. Um, that's fine. Uh, that I can promise you. Do you want to Do you want to try to highlight who you're uh, throwing slight shade at? You could highlight comments just to see if that works for you. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and you see the that little star next to it. If you want to revisit a comment, you uh -huh. just you just uh, click it that star oh. and then 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 it you know in case it's there's more chat coming in scroll you know you could highlight it there i see okay okay all right yeah so i'm like i'm like a boomer with this stuff i i feel like a boomer uh you'll trying get, to it, you'll get it uh this is my first time so i max was very gentle with me <laughs> hey and you forgot me <laughs> as well as uh Talati. <laughs> Which is what I needed, you know what I mean. But this is uh, this is our opportunity to we we broke on this channel. We broke down Gina Carano's lawsuits and complaints against Disney. Mm -hmm. And if you recall, well, you know what? Before we before I get into that, let's 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 revisit what her basis was, and I've highlighted it because they actually mentioned it in this response. Okay, so Gina Carano alleged that Disney violated, uh, she brought three counts against Disney. One, that Disney violated the California Labor Code pr provision, which prevents employers from directing employees' political activity. Basically, it's like um, people were getting fired for doing off-work um, political things, you know what I mean? Whether it be Save the Whales or the Environment or BLM or whatever. So California passed a statute saying that you know, you can't do that. You can't fire people for that. Mm -hmm. um, then her other count was, again, similar, uh, taking adverse uh, actions against employees for that protected political activity. And then the third one was that it was basically sexual discrimination because they had male employees doing stuff similar to what Gina was doing, but they nailed Gina, but not the male employees. Remember we talked about Adrian. that last time? <laughs> Specifically, Pedro. She also mentioned Mark Hamill, but it was mostly Pedro. Yes, correct. That's true. Mark Hamill. Listen, I like Mark Hamill, but he says a lot of political stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He does. Well, yeah. He was trending on Twitter because he openly came out and said he was supporting Joe Biden in the next election. I don't think anyone was surprised by that. But, but that's exactly the kind of – that's his right. And that's exactly what the kind of thing that California statute is protecting. Now – uh, just again, for background, state laws can do whatever they want as long as they don't contradict federal laws. So, it, 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 see, Claudia, you in the UK, you guys are a, uh, a federalist government, meaning that the, the, the government does uh, for federal laws, you know, apply to everybody. But we're, yeah. we're, we're a union of states and yeah. there's great deference to state law, except when federal law decides to step in. And you right. cannot take away federal rights under state law. This is what all these lawsuits are. 
So again, not to get into political stuff, but the most popular one is, you know, the, uh, well, I don't even want to say, you know, it, let's say there's a, a medical procedure somebody wants to get in a certain state. Yeah. Okay. You're allowed to make regulations on that medical procedure as long as they don't vi as they don't violate the federal procedures. You can't, so you can't take, you can't, whatever, you can't contradict federal. That's okay. just basically it. Okay, so then the other thing I told you guys, everybody, um, is that the first thing Disney would do is file something called a demur or a motion to dismiss. And that's basically saying that, hey, you've brought a claim, but you don't even have the basic facts to be allowed to bring this claim. So we're going to kill your lawsuit right here. Okay? Okay. Prime example of that. All right? So Max says that um, I was in Pennsylvania, and I walked into a Wawa. He was there, and I punched him. I have proof that I've never been into Pennsylvania. Max's lawsuit dies right there. You know what I mean? So Max doesn't get to do any discovery, nothing, okay? So we knew that that was going to happen, and these are the games lawyers play. Remember, the lawyers who are representing Disney, these are like $2,000 an hour attorneys. And wow. Yeah, well, the, and, and the, the, well, can you imagine being the kind of law firm that Disney hires, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I, I can imagine. Yeah, so this is a very common procedure. So they filed what's called a 12B6 motion to dismiss, which is basically saying Gina has not brought a statable claim. So that's the background. Just as we predicted on this channel, this is what they've done. This is not an answer to her complaint, okay? You file a complaint, then you submit an answer. Or you say, I'm not even going to file an answer because the complaint is garbage. So throw the case out, judge. It, this is very commonly filed. It is rarely granted, but people still do it because these are the games you play in the legal field. Right. So for background, if that makes sense. So yeah, I've already like a Hail Mary worth a shot, you know. Yeah, and it's also like buys them time. Like when they file this, it's easy. They can while they're doing this, they're still doing their answer. Like they're getting ready for their real answer. They know this is going to be denied, but it gives us a kind of a glimpse into what they're going for. And it's interesting what they're going for, truthfully. So I've already gone through everything, and I've highlighted some some things for you, everybody that I thought were interesting, um, and try to ignore the other stuff. And it's it's shorter than the Gina complaint. Okay, so they are going on First Amendment grounds, if you can believe it. Okay, that is the main crux of their argument, meaning that Gina telling them you can't fire me because of my political speech is Gina telling them you don't have the first amendment right to uh, not let me t say my stuff and, and, and keep me fired. Uh, does that, I don't know if that makes sense. Basically they're saying that we're Disney. We're allowed to project it, uh, whatever message we want. And if you're contrary to it, it's our first amendment right to get rid of you. Okay. That is the route they're going down is interesting, which I found very interesting. I didn't expect them to do that. Yeah. That is the route. Okay. So, now look at this highlight here. Look how they describe Disney, uh, Gina. Disney engaged plaintiff Gina Carano as a guest actor in various episodes of the first two seasons. Okay. So not a cast member. <laughs> well, that's that that's interesting there because that uh, like she it sounds like she would would have had a contract for a new show, but she was like before they got that part to where they. Like they didn't give like almost like the James Gunn. I didn't fire. I just didn't hire her for the new show. Like they didn't they didn't start her new show because of her activities. It seems like. I but, don't know. but but what I don't understand is is that she was in season one and season two. But, but they're saying as a guest character. I don't know what her con. We don't know. I guess we don't yeah. do you have that contract yet. That is that any part of your presentation today? It or? has not been released. It Bruce, please released. join in. Please come on on if you can. Yeah. This yeah, is please. Voltaire's first stream. Yeah, please come on, please. He's in charge, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So, that's those are excellent points that you guys just made because we don't know what her contract is, but they're, they're not calling her a cast member of the show, right? Pedro Pascal's not a guest actor. He's a cast member, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he's right. a lead, but, you know, he's a cast member. They are... They, they specifically titled her as a guest actor, actress, which is 
just like Bill Burr was a guest actor in the Mandalorian. That's very, that's very interesting. That's that. That's the way the angle they're going with this Voltaire First Amendment is because they're going to try to say it's her First Amendment. She was so they're they're doing like whose First Amendment oversees the other. Exactly. And then the, the other thing that they're doing is oh she was not a regular she was a, a guest character just like we didn't bring Bill Burr back. Right. But and it's like have no guarantee or expectation of being brought back. And but, and she was being talked about for a new series but was that contract signed yet? I don't think it was. I honestly don't. But what I'm conf what I'm confused about is them uh Disney calling Gina as a guest character, but yet she was part of the first two seasons, as we all know. And the fact that them calling them guest characters, you might as well call all the other characters guest characters at that point then, right? Like, you know, people that aren't the main cast. So like, what we don't know, Talati, is, 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 is that classification related to a contractual issue? Or is it relate like our regular cast members? Because who's a regular cast member of the first two seasons of Mandalorian other than Pedro C Pascal? Uh, the, so is uh, Carl Weathers a guest character? Yeah, that that that's the, that. You see, that's a question. You see, that's that's a question too. It's like, is Carl Weathers a guest character or is he a main cast? So I would, class, I would classify him as a main cast, though, in my opinion. Well, we don't know the contract, as Bruce For says. Maybe her contract calls her a guest character, right? They, right. but they're putting that out front and center. This is early. This is in the introduction. Look at it, it's the it's in the second paragraph or third paragraph of the or second paragraph of the inter, introduction. There's a reason they mention that. Remember, all these things are written and reviewed by multiple people, and everything is placed for a reason. Right. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've just highlighted what I think. So when I, I I've scanned these kinds of documents for years, so I kind of things that that stand out to me are what stand out to judges, yeah. and I kind of know why they're doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Okay, so then it goes on. Carano began engaging with show fans and the public in a manner that, in Disney's view, came to distract from and undermine Disney's own expressive efforts. So again, this is First Amendment. They're saying Dis. Now, this is why. Here's why this is interesting to me. Right. Disney is saying they have expressive efforts. Right. Mm -hmm. They're saying that they're sending a message out with their work. Yeah. So I find that interesting, but it goes to their First Amendment argument. It means we do have something that we're trying to say, and she was contrary to that. But okay. So next. And then they go through some of the stuff she said. Um, and then, but here, here's the interesting thing Carano's decision to publicly trivialize the Holocaust by comparing criticism of political conservatives to the annihilation of millions of Jewish people notably not thousands, was the final straw for Disney. So again, they're highlighting that last, well, I don't know if it was the last thing, but we all know the tweet at this point, right? Yeah. Where she said that, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. So why are they doing that. that? Because arguably that's the worst one. Um, saying that she was trivializing the Holocaust is very bad, obviously. So, you know, we see the route they're going down. Um, okay. So, so the, the, now they get into their first amendment argument. Um, now one of the interesting things they did too, is one of Gina Carano's attorneys. So there's something called law review articles. Law review articles are, are just what they sound like. They're professional articles written in law journals by you know esteemed lawyers if a student does something really good it could be published but rarely that kind of thing gina carano oh. yeah go ahead i was gonna ask you like the first amendment thing like their first amendment it's like them are picking out what she did wrong so to say is that is that what you're trying to imply is like so no, the if... right to the right to say what they want or right to their well no actually it's not quite that it's 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 if 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 um from a simple thing if Max has uh, a channel and he says green M and M's are the best brown or, or yellow M and M's are terrible, yeah. So and then somebody on his channel says, well, no, I I like yellow M and M's. They're better than green. And Max says, no, no. The message I'm portraying out here is that green M and M's are the best. So that's Max's free speech. Disney's free speech is saying that 
whatever. And Gina was going contrary to Disney's free speech message. So that's why I thought that was oh. interesting. They're saying that their company has a message. And D Gina was going contrary to that message. Now I understand. So the reason that's they interesting. Have an agenda. <laughs> they have, a, they have got an agenda. It, yeah. That's it. What does everybody accuse them of? <laughs> Having an agenda? They're not right. neutral. They're not neutral. Right. Correct. So they admit that in this. This is they, probably good ammunition for the anti SJWs. If any of them read this carefully, this is tremendous ammunition. For they're, it. they're they're leaving it on the table. They're leaving. They have all this ammo on the table, and they don't know if they're even using that. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's it. And then, sort of like what Bruce was saying, I won't bring people on my show that ruin my show's reputation. So, yeah, that kind of thing. So that's why he won't bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's why he won't. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so, okay, so now the other, so there's all kinds of little games lawyers play. So one of Gina Carano's attorneys, Gina's attorney, he's an esteemed attorney. Elon Musk hired him, right? So he wrote a law review article about what? Companies having free speech. And if their employees violate it, why companies are allowed to get rid of them. So all throughout this response, they cite Gina's attorney's article. Okay? So when you present these documents to a judge, you always cite, like, case law and precedent. They cite this guy, her own attorney's article. Do you understand how that's, like, a big F.U. sandwich to Gina? Like, your own attorney says that I'm allowed to do this. Does uh, that make sense? Okay. That's yeah, next next lawyer, next level lawyering to like yeah. go into yeah. their Vol Vol go into on the, the, yeah uh, go into their the opposing sides um you know yeah um, yeah scholarly articles right yeah and use it <laughs> so they like say, next level fu yeah so anytime yeah. you'll see this if you glance at this complaint you see this Volkov guy that's him yeah and they cite this and look what his articles title private employee speech. Political activities, statutory protection against employer retaliation. He wrote a law review article about that. And they cite that thing nonstop throughout this. And that's a big F you to, you know, them. So anyway, um, so organizations that create speech products may be free to refuse to include speakers whose outside speech undermines the organization's message. So again, they're saying we're an organization. We have a message. Gina violated our message. That's interesting to me because of what we just talked about. Disney's admitting we have a message, everybody. <laughs> we have an agenda. <laughs> well, that's so. not something they publicly said before. Like even Bob Iger was on things like, oh, we're, we're you know, you, don't, yeah. don't you think it? I'm well, you're 100% right. When he commented on Gina's comments, he just said her comments were abhorrent and I don't like them. Yeah, well, that, on that point too, I had an I had a point that I wanted to ask you, Voltaire. Um, that kind of goes against uh, them Dis saying that Disney saying that she was just a guest. Why did they have to feel to out her on social media if she was just a guest and not a reg? You know, she kind of was perceived as a regular, right? So that yeah. kind of goes to Gina's camp of oh no, I, why would they have to publicly outcast me in my comments if I was just a guest? You know. Right, just don't bring me back as a guest if that's how you feel. Yeah, yeah. they could have handled it that way. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting. But I, I also wanted to ask, uh, why wouldn't Disney want to settle this? Why would they want to public? It seems like they want to battle her with this one. Why wouldn't they want to just settle it privately or something? Or she's not going to stay private or I don't know. So exactly. We talked a little bit about this the last time, right? What is Gina's motivation, right? Elon Musk is filing that is funding this lawsuit. Well, Elon wants to make it public, right? Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Elon so Musk said anybody that these companies so, blackballed. Go ahead. So he wouldn't. He potentially wouldn't want to settle if he's paying for her representation. He doesn't want to just settle quietly. He wants a big public spectacle for even uh, promoting X. There you go. He yeah. wants to out Disney. He wants to give them a headache. Now. He can't control what these lawyers do because Gina is the client. Even though he's paying them, there's very strict rules about that kind of thing. Gina's the client. So does Gina want to settle? No. I don't I don't know. You know, we had a whole discussion about this. Apparently, she comes from a wealthy family. 
I, I, I don't know. I don't know what you Gina honestly th didn't she say part of it is that she wants their job back? I'm like, that is like so far removed from what's possible. That is one of the. Does, do you think she generally wants that, or she's just saying that? Like, I. I don't, Max. I don't. I, I don't know what's in Gina's mind because you know, if I'm Gina, if I was in Gina's position, and I was told by John Favreau, your life is going to change. Exactly. Remember they quoted that in the complaint. John Favreau told her, your life is going to change. They're doing a show, and you're going to be one of the leads. I would have done nothing. I would have been so. I would have been you know neutral. Do you see Leonardo DiCaprio out there saying anything about anything? You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you see Brad yeah. Pitt out there saying anything no. about anything? You know what I mean? So, but she felt the need to do this, and I don't know what's in her brain. So, I don't know. I mean, as an aspiring actress, you'd think that she'd want to be on that show. Right. Even if she thought the way she thought, like, why risk it for some stupid internet I guess be, I go. I guess it goes to the true addiction of social media and, and likes and stuff. Likes are not going to make your world unless you're a certain type of social. Unless you're a yeah. certain type of celebrity, like yes, likes and stuff help some people. Most people they ruin your prospects. Yeah, <laughs> right. And right. if you think about what she gave up, remember this is a woman who came from UFC and was converting into. Becoming oh, a legitimate well, actor. Yeah, and when you get in you if you get popular on one series, I'm sure they would have used her in other Disney Plus shows, you know? Right. I mean, it opened up a whole thing. And people liked her character. Let's all remember that. Everybody liked her character. She was she was a good character and she was a strong lady. There's a lot of reason to believe that that Cara Doom would have been in a lot of stuff. But she chose not to. I, I I don't know what's in her brain, you know. But anyway, okay. So um, again, they cite the article, and, and they're saying he recognizes that the principle does not extend to employers and employees not engaged in creating speech products. So they're saying Disney is engaged in creating speech products. So if employees act against that speech product, they get to fire them. So. For those employees and for non-expressive employee employers in general, state law uh, hang on a second uh, can protect em employee political activity without violating the employee's speech rights. So what they're saying is, if you work at Home Depot and you go and you're stocking uh, two by fours all day long, and then you go on a YouTube channel and you have a political, like let's say you're a massive environmentalist or whatever, that kind of political speech doesn't affect your employer because Home Depot is in the business of selling lumber. So you going and talking about, well, I guess the environment's a bad example for Home Depot. Let's say I you're uh, going to say, well, there, I think you messed, messed up with that one. Yeah. Home Depot is not good for the environment. So, okay. Let's say you're um, a BLM. Okay. I, I just, I wasn't trying yeah. to get whatever. So you go work at Home Depot stacking two by fours and you have a pro BLM channel at night. Mm-hmm. That has nothing to do with Home Depot's business. Home Depot's in the business of selling lumber. You're doing BLM. Home Depot can't fire you in California for talking about BLM. That's contrary to the statute because that has nothing to do with Home Depot's business. But Disney's business is speech. By producing their content, they consider that to be speech. And therefore, what their actors say does affect their product. Because does that make sense? Yeah, Disney's supposed to be for everyone and, you know, very, um, you know, incl inclusive, diverse. And some of some of her opinions, while well, she has the freedom of speech to say it, mm -hmm. uh, kind of go against that image. It goes, yeah. against their, it goes against their brand. Right. That and Home Depot sells lumber. Disney creates movies and TV. Movies and TV are speech. Therefore, they get First Amendment protection there themselves. Does that make sense? Their art is speech. Correct. Her speech counteracts their speech. Exactly. That's that's that that that's the theory of the case. You just figured it out, Max. That's the theory of the case they're going on. As opposed to Home Depot, we're selling lumber. Our employee talking on YouTube after hours has nothing to do with us selling lumber. There you go. But it's interesting. My bad example. That's a strong, strong angle to go. I think. Yeah, it it's interesting. If Home Depot fired somebody who was an environmentalist for not cutting down trees, could they? <laughs> could this? Could they use the same arguments? But that's not. That's a whole other thing. 
Um, so I, I don't. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to highlight for you if that's okay, Voltaire. Yeah. So Anthony Cheeseman says this case wouldn't even make it past Judge Judy. I think it's a strong case, even though I, I, this the way that Disney's presenting it, Disney's lawyers. I think they have. A, I, I was thinking it was stronger what Gina's camp was doing until I, until you started going over this. Now I'm like, okay, I, I like that they're going the First Amendment route in using Gina's lawyers' uh, paperwork or, you know, theory on it to, yeah. uh, to go after. It's very, I think, I think, I think Disney's going to end up winning this one. It's interesting. Yeah. It's, they make an I, interesting I, argument. Go ahead. I, I, I think I, I, I agree with Max. I think Disney's got this one. I think it's because I feel like, like it, it, it's all about the money power and because Disney's got a lot of money back in them compared to, you know, Gina, it's like, it's an organization. Disney's an organization. They know that they can make billions. And, like, Gina's really using this, um, using this as, uh, using this to kind of boost up a profile, so to say, using mm -hmm. Elon Musk and whatnot. You know but, what's real, really odd is the anti-SJW mm -hmm. channels have not been covering this that much. Like the Daily Wire even didn't cover this. That she's I don't I don't remember seeing a video pop. You know. Yeah, yeah. She's kind of like on her own. She's going to other political channels, but not the not the usual nerd political moot channels, but just political political channels. It's weird. Yeah, I, I don't know that that's true. <laughs> I don't know that that's true, Zena. No. <laughs> Zena, I'm actually learning things, actually. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, it is interesting that people aren't talking about this, but maybe it's because they think it's too deep, but whatever. This is a fascinating. You'd think they would jump all over the fact that she's going on the First Amendment, that, that Disney is admitting they have an agenda. This is like, Doomcock should be excited about this. We knew it! <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but anyway. Right, right. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, so it is an impermissible effort for to invoke state power to override a private entity's decisions about what to say on its own art and how to say it. So they're saying California state law. So remember, this is state law saying that you can't nail people for political speech. They're saying the state law violates Disney's, um, Disney's. rights. Remember why this law was created. This law was created in California, super, one of the most liberal states in the union, Taladia, FYI. Um, yeah. It's because they don't want people who are pro BLM, pro whatever, con you know, to be fired by their employers. Look how oh, Disney yeah. is using it, saying, hey, this is violating our rights. This California law is no good. It violates federal law. Remember what I told you? You can't violate federal law. This state law violates federal law. So you can't nail us for this. Yeah, what are you doing, Newsom? No, I'm saying fascinating, that. actually. No, I, this is actually it, really good for, regardless of where you stand on politics. This is a good precedent uh, case, right? And it's, there, and it's, you think, like, yeah, the results of this will really help people understand their rights. And it understand, and it gets people to understand the U.S. law as well in this case because. A lot of people don't understand the U.S. law like myself, right? So I kind of am learning a lot of things about how the U.S. court takes takes things compared to the U.K. law. So, yeah. so it's like... Yeah, and, and, and to be honest with you, nobody's going this deep into this stuff like we are. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, okay, so now they go into the relevant allegations. Okay, so again... I. I Look at this comment. Carano was not under contract to appear on the third season of The Mandalorian or any other Disney products. The product. James Gunn role. I didn't hire. I didn't fire you. I didn't hire you. <laughs> right? There's a reason he. No, honestly, there's a reason he says that so much. Right? That's yeah. An easy, that's an easy out. That's that's spinning. You know, she wasn't actually fired. She just wasn't rehired. You know. Christopher uh, says. It would only affect change if it goes it, to the trial, then appeal. That's that's going to be the big thing. If she could prove that she was already under contract, and in, in this, in what they're presenting, she wasn't. No. 
contract no. matters. Apparently. She was a guest. Remember, so far what they've told us, she was a guest character. She had no future contracts. Yeah, even though it was discussed, it wasn't wasn't signed. Like, yeah, Favreau was, right. or uh, mm-hmm. Filoni or Favreau was telling her you're gonna change. Things are gonna change for you, but didn't happen wait, 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 yet wait, that wait. they were developing Vince, a show. Vince makes up a great point, right? If you're not under contract, are you really fired? And that's no. what Max was saying. That's a James Gunn argument. <laughs> yeah, James that's Gunn a James... argument. Yeah, yeah, Henry Cavill wasn't fired either. He wasn't hired. Yeah. Even though he, this is actually the Cavill is a great comparison because they were telling him that he was going to come back, right? Yeah. But he didn't actually have the contract. And I that was one of the biggest L's I've taken on my channel. Be quiet, Bruce. <laughs> There's only a few L's. <laughs> only a few L's. The one big L is... I do not think Warner Brothers or Henry Cavill Actually, would be this stupid, even though I like Cavill, to yeah. let them be in the end of the movie and go on a promotion tour without things ironed out. But yes, they were. And actually, Warner Brothers exploited that. So Elizabeth that's is... actually a good comparison. They had discussions. Cavill had discussions with people in Warner Brothers mm-hmm. for his future there, but nothing was signed on the dotted line. Right. Yeah, I, I had an L too. Actually, actually, Disney's lawyers could use that. You know, this stuff. Happens. Use the Cavill argument. No, 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 no. I mean that you discuss you, in the entertainment industry. You discuss future plans, but until it's signed, it's not. It's not definite. It's like all this talk yeah. until then. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Things are being developed. Things are ideas being developed, are being but... thrown around. Lunches are being had, but that doesn't yeah, mean it, anything. Right. Yeah. Things change in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. That's that's actually. A strong argument for uh, Disney side, I think. Things change. It's a very strong argument, right? And there's a reason they call her a guest actor, and now they're saying this, right? We didn't fire her. So what the hell standing does she have? You know what I mean? Standing means you have standing to bring a lawsuit, like you have the ability to bring a lawsuit. You're not an employee. You were. You had no future contracts. You have no standing. Although they don't say it, they're saying it without saying it. Very interesting stuff to me. Okay, so next, again, you know, I, I I try to get through the weeds. They get into the thing. They they put this emoji in the compl- in the answer, by the way, just to show you these lawyers. The, every lawyer is a bit of a performist, as I told you that time. Um, okay, again, Disney. They're focusing on Carano grotesquely trivializing the Holocaust, whatever. Okay, then these are just the counts that they brought. We talked about that already. All right. So the state cannot impose liability on Disney for making that decision. Carano's claims should be dismissed. Again, what I said about Disney is producing a message. Carano went against it. Disney is in the business of producing messages. So they're allowed to file uh, fire people if they go contrary to these messages. That's what they're saying. Okay, so we kind of talked about that already. Now, here's an interesting thing. The basis, the main, so in America, Kate, we're, it's also in the UK, actually, we're, we're a law of precedent, meaning whatever higher courts rule, you have to follow. So they cite this case Hurley. This is a Supreme Court case that went down in the, in the early 90s. So uh, Hurley's unanimous, this is the Supreme Court of the United States, held that, uh, an organizer. Okay, so what? I'm just going to tell you what Hurley was. Hurley was a uh, in in Boston. They had a uh, St. Patrick's Day parade, and I think it was the group. It was called the Irish American, um, whatever, some Irish group. Uh, I oh, uh, South Boston Allied War Veterans Council, authorized by the city of Boston to organize a St. Patrick's Day parade. They were putting it on. Then the Irish American gay, lesbian, and bisexual group of Boston wanted to put a float in that parade. The veterans said what? This is the early 90s in Boston. What do you think they said? Heck no. <laughs> we don't want the gay Irish uh, group to put a, uh, a float in our parade. Right. And then in the media at that time would have been fine with that too at that time. <laughs> exactly. Honestly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So – uh, hi, Rhea. So the remember to do a parade, you have to go to the city and get permits. So the Irish gay, lesbian, bisexual, whatever community group said, hey, man, we have a First Amendment right to march in this parade with these people. 
And this is a city. Remember, First Amendment rights are when the government takes away your free speech, not a private company, right? So they, the gay, lesbian community, whatever, Irish community, they said, hey, we want to be in this parade. The city of Boston can't prevent us from being in this parade. You gave a permit to these guys. You can't prevent gay, uh, you can't discriminate against us because of our sexual orientation. This went to the Supreme Court of the United States. And the Supreme Court ruled that the, they could exclude them. And they cite to this case. That's the case they're using. So the Supreme Court unanimously, so Ruth Bader Ginsburg was on this Supreme Court. So it wasn't all conservatives, right? Uh, unanimously held that the organizer of the parade had a constitutional right to exclude from the parade a, gr a group seeking to impart a message the organizers do not wish to convey on then contentious issues surrounding okay. gay rights. So you see, yeah. that's what they're saying. You allowed it there. The Supreme Court allowed it there. They should allow it for Disney now. Hmm. Hmm. So there is somewhat some precedent there already, uh, which I think most of us would be supportive of the organization that wanted to be in the parade. But think mm -hmm. about if it was a different organization with a, a message that we disagree with, like, you know, I don't want to say they like you know. I know what you're getting at. KKK Let's say, or yeah. something. You right. obviously wouldn't want because they have a horrible message. Even if it's not a message you disagree with, they still have a message, and they that's not what the parade's about. So correct. So if the you know if the local church wanted to put on a parade, <laughs> right, and then like you said, a group like the KKK came out and said they wanted to because that would be the same argument. It's our First Amendment right, oh. right? Yeah. So. So what I'm getting at this is like Disney is using this to basically say, oh, well, it's our right for what we want as a message. And, you know, you broke that you broke that rule, basically. Yeah. Right. So what they're so what they're kind of saying is so this is Vince's comment. A lot of yeah. people think the First Amendment saves you from all speech in all cases. It doesn't. He's right. It doesn't. But. It does, the, the, the government is not allowed to limit your speech. The government. So in the parade example, the gay lesbian community were saying, hey, this is a government-sponsored thing because you gave, you gave permits, so you're limiting our speech. So that's a violation. Now, Disney is saying the California law is trying to limit our speech. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Right? So the state law, which is a governmental entity, is trying to limit Disney speech. So, so this is how next level this argument that the Disney lawyers are going is they knew Gina was going to say First Amendment right. And they're like, you're violating our First Amendment rights. <laughs> <laughs> right? Thank you. Yes. Right? That's what I'm so, trying to so, convey. Yes. So that, that's that's really interesting. Like, I didn't – did that kind of uh, surprise you that they went that route? Like, I wasn't expecting – Disney's arguing First Amendment, right? That's where Gina's on the, all these YouTube channels and, you know, on the... Yeah, you violate our First Amendment right, Gina, by... And <laughs> State of California. In, in, in California. Gina and State of California, yeah. That's interesting. It's, it's very interesting, you see, because, I, like, the way I see it is, is like, it's actually, it's like a game of chess, right? So if you make one move, one wrong move, then... Your opponent can make that right. Uh, the the opponent can make the right move and call you out your bluff on it. Yeah. Do, do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what it is, and it is. It did surprise me actually. I didn't know they were going to go this route. Yeah. I was surprised about that. I did not expect it to. I'm not a First Amendment lawyer, so you know what I mean. I don't deal with that. But in a way, it's kind of brilliant, right? They're saying yeah. her bringing this California statute against us is violating our free speech rights. You can't do that to us. And then look at the case they're using. They're using a case where you were <laughs> that the Supreme Court said you can ban gay lesbian rights in our parade. So hey, if you can ban a gay lesbian float in our parade in a parade, then we can ban Gina Carano for talking about the Holocaust and talking about conservative things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like gamesmanship in a way, but you know, like. I wonder if that's even with the conservative court we have today, if this case came today that you were trying to exclude a float from a parade, 
for gay lesbian. Yeah, I don't know. That, I don't know that they admit. I mean, the end of Disney would be supporting. <laughs> <laughs> so they're actually using what it's very next level. Like, wow. It really? is next level. Yeah. Okay. No, he gets it. He got it exactly, Bruce, for something. <laughs> they just, Zeno and Bruce are just collaborating in the chat, trying to mock my intelligence. I well, they're, they're, am smart enough to know what you're doing, Zeno. Even if I was like a hundred percent, if I, if, yeah, some things may have, uh, floated over my head in this in this stream, but even if I was a hundred percent, you would still say the same thing. I yeah. see you. I know yeah. you. Well, not only that, you're actually insulting me because I'm trying to teach everybody. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I yeah. I'm trying to explain this, and I I always say like I write my legal briefs. I don't try to write them fancy. My policy is I want a average intelligence high school student to be able to understand exactly what I'm saying. So if I can't convey that, I'm doing a bad job. So you know. Oh wow! It just explained our relationship. Thanks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Voltaire. That's why you like no, talking. No. Yeah. That's how I speak. You don't. I, I, I know. Just <laughs> in general, in general, you never need to speak better than or or more complex than something that a average intelligence high schooler. Otherwise, you're just trying too hard, in my opinion. But anyway, um, okay. So um, again, then they bring up another case, a Supreme Court case. So there was a case with the Boy Scouts of America, all right? They had an openly gay scoutmaster, and they fired him, all right? And that went to the Supreme Court as well. And guess what the Supreme Court said? Boy Scouts are allowed to hire, fire an openly gay um, mm. scout leader, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the case. The court and that came after the float case. So what happens is when these kind of cases come down, then other cases start coming out after it and expanding on the law or limiting it. So in the in the Boy Scout case, the court held that it must defer to the Boy Scouts account of what would impair its expression because courts should not second guess an entity entity's expression on the ground that they view a particular expression as unwise or irrational, meaning the Boy Scouts of America thought that an openly gay scoutmaster was not projecting the message that they were trying to convey. Therefore, so they're they had a message. Exactly. So if you admit you have a message and you interfere with my message, I have the right. Okay. Correct. So look at the cases they're citing too. First, you had a gay lesbian float band and the Supreme Court said that was okay. Now you have an openly gay scoutmaster. And the Supreme Court said that was okay. Now you're trying to tell us we can't say it's okay to ban Gina Carano? And the con and conservative judges would have a hard time going against that because that's that's what they're <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Right? right? Exactly. So, so they've used something that uh conservative, you know, judges would would be have a hard time like saying, Oh, well, you're wrong. We can't, you know. <laughs> Yes, they, they want those things. Bruce, she says her actions were conservative. She says she was fired for conservative. I agree. You know, however you want to classify it, but that's what she was saying. Remember, we're, we're looking at this agnostically for the most part. But it is interesting how Disney's attorneys, you see how Disney's attorneys are attacking this. They're, well, whatever. It's, it's, I don't need to get into it. I think I've made it clear what they're trying, what they're trying to do here. Um, Okay. Um, okay. So, the, to the extent that the publisher's choice of writers affects expressive content in its newspaper, the First Amendment protects choice. So, again, this is the argument you would expect from them. If a newspaper or a magazine, let's say Sports Illustrated or whatever, Maxim Magazine, you know, says, "Hey, we want to, we, we, we're firing this writer because we don't like the kind of articles he's writing," we're allowed to do that because we're Maxim Magazine. We have this message that we present. Blah, blah, blah. This is what you would expect from Disney. But they went the other route. And now they're throwing this in. Remember, when you do legal arguments, you put your strongest arguments first. And then you put your secondary arguments. So they're saying, anyway, we're a publisher. So if we, if we, have, what, if we have like a product we produce and that person's not consistent with that product, we can fire them. That's the end of it. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. The Ninth Circuit likewise held... More recently, that the First Amendment protects a beauty pageant's right not to include a trans transgender participants.
because the inclusion of such participants was an expressive decision. And that was a Paget's own choice to make. That was a 2022 case. Now, why did they cite that case? Two reasons. One, it's the Ninth Circuit. Ninth Circuit is California. This is a California case. Ninth Circuit is the most liberal federal court in the country. The most liberal federal court in the country in 2022 allowed a beauty pageant to ban a transgender uh, participant. What? That is crazy. Yeah. Like to to ban to ban a participant. That that is wrong, in my opinion. Well, but they're 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 saying they're get, using these as excuses as to why they could ban Gina, or, exactly. or not, not include her. These are all things that have rolled. And then it, if for some, for, so does does the uh, is this a a jury or a judge that decides this you think in federal uh so once you get so once you get to this level of federal court like the ninth circuit it's it's a it's a it's a panel of judges it's panel more of judges. Than so yeah. if a panel of judges going against this panel of federal would, judges would, federal yeah. judges would like flip the script like they'd be like uh this would open a can of worms if they sided with Gina on this, Mr. Fuss said this isn't people. I, I'm ask. I'm asking. That helps for the audience too, Bruce. No, there's it no dumb questions. This is weird. You know, like, I mean, my questions can't be dumb, but I'll ask them. I'll ask them. Yeah. But th that helps the, some of the audience. Then no, you know. No, no, no. I, I'm don't don't be. These are good questions. None of these questions are silly. So again, and remember, the Ninth Circuit. The two most liberal courts are the Ninth Circuit and the Second Circuit. Second Circuit is what New York, right? So these are the most liberal courts, but I'm telling you, in my experience, the Ninth Circuit is more liberal than the Second Circuit. And in 2022, the Ninth Circuit, like, the, I'm telling you, some of the decisions out of the Ninth Circuit judges, when you read them, you're like, how does that even make sense? But even they said, we can't, we can't stop them from banning a transgender. So a transgender participant. So again, see what Disney's doing. Hey, the state of California federal court, not state. Remember, when you have a problem with the – so the way it works, if you have a problem with a California state law, you have to go through the California federal court first, and then you can go to the Supreme Court. So the, the California federal court said that you can ban a transgender person, and now you're trying to tell us we can't fire Gina Carano. That's what they're saying. Fascinating to me anyway as a – you oh, know. Me too. Yeah, yeah. This is fascinating to understand, like how the court procedures are, like how they would, you know, see things and like take, you know, take examples from different, you know, like for example, the thing you brought about the gay parade thing, right? They're taking examples from that and using that against Gina. So it's like it's very interesting. It really is. It really is. Um, then they use another example where. A Boston symphony, symphony orchestra had a uh, a contract with a uh, opera singer, but she was a PLO member, Palestinian Liberation Organization, back in 1988. Why are they bringing up this case now that somebody was a pro? So they fired a pro-Palestinian orchestra member, right, in 1988. Why are they bringing up this case now? Yeah. Because it's a hot topic now. Right. <laughs> And they were allowed to do it. So do you see? And there's been a lot of firings about pro Palestinian in the last year um, about social media too. Right, right. Isn't that interesting? But you see what their attorneys are doing, right? They're saying, "Hey, we all know these are hot button issues, and look at the the courts have said this is okay." Um. Okay. This is all. So look, guys. I didn't highlight a lot of this stuff because they did just citing cases that I don't feel are. I just kind of wanted to get my point across to you guys. Okay. Okay. So then, um, now they get into a little more meat. This is nobody can doubt. For example, how much casting decisions affected the artistic messages conveyed in such performances as Hamilton. For the show, the expressive message was inescapably interwoven with the casting decisions whom the musical decided to cast and whom the musical decided to exclude. Now, what they're trying to say is we can cast whoever we want. Look at Hamilton. They didn't cast any white people in Hamilton. That's, they're saying that without saying it, right? Because why are they bringing up Hamilton, right? 
Mm -hmm. Um, They discriminated in Hamilton. There was a reason they discriminated in Hamilton. That was their artistic expression. See how they're using these kind of things? You know what I mean? Um, Yeah. Examples. Yeah. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, The First Amendment fully protects Disney's decision to exclude Carano from its own artistic speech to avoid associating that speech with views that Disney considered offensive and disruptive of its efforts to spread its own message as it deemed appropriate. Okay. Yeah. So this is the kind of comment. Yeah, go ahead. No, that's all. They're, they, they're fully admitting the agenda now, which I'm, you know, I'm yeah. fine with their agenda. Most people, mo- most, most people have agendas too, besides just the art. <laughs> uh huh. So this is the kind of stuff, though. You would think that the nerdrotics and the doomcocks would be saying, "Look at this! They're saying it. <laughs> you know, they're openly <laughs> saying that they have an agenda. We told you. We mm-hmm. told you. You know. Um. So Disney was thus entitled to protect its creative speech in the Star Wars series from association with views Disney and many viewers and potential viewers considered offensive and contrary to Disney's values. Again, more emphasizing what they were going for. Carano's presence as a prominent actor on The Mandalorian interfered with Disney's choice not to produce a show associated with her beliefs. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, yeah, we fired her for what she said on Twitter. Uh, uh, Volta, according to Bruce, if... Hamilton had a white cast member. Okay, well, yeah, Bruce, I was generalizing, but, you know, they mostly, ca- I thought they mostly, the mo- the point of Hamilton was to sort of not cast. Diversify, them. yeah. Yeah, diversify. Right. Right. Okay, yeah, they had one, but you know what I'm talking about, Bruce. We like to, you know. Um, okay, so what did you say yeah. first, Vince? Yeah, he said, he said, he said, he said it first. I think the king was right. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, sorry. I was, I presume that they, they, they used Hamilton as an example. I've never been able to get through all of Hamilton. Sorry. (laughs) 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 Too much singing for me. Um, Corano. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So there. Uh, okay, so the rule of speaker's autonomy adopted in Dale and Hurley, those are the two cases we talked about, the Boy Scouts and the uh, Boston uh, Marathon, or not Marathon, Boston uh, Parade, uh, means that Disney, not Carano, or the state has the sole right to decide what artistic speech to produce and how to produce it. The rule also means that Disney, not Carano, or the state is solely entitled to decide what message it seeks to convey in its art and what association might impair those efforts. Mm. So, and again, see this, this citation here, that's to her attorney's article. So again, there you go. Yeah. Maybe I got to give Hamilton another chance, Jeffrey. I know. I know. Everybody says it's good. Probably not. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, As the Supreme court explained in Dale, again, that's the boy scout case. It is irrelevant whether an entity chooses to send one message but not the other by discussing it, by disassociating itself from only some speakers. Now, what's that mean, right? So Pedro was saying one thing. Gina was saying another. It's our choice who we fire. Oh, okay. So what that, so Dale, one of the arguments that the uh, Boy Scout troop guy who got fired's argument was there's other gay Boy Scout uh, troop leaders and you didn't fire them. Why did you fire me? And their thing was, well, they weren't public, so we can pick and choose who we fire. They're using this as Gina. We can pick and choose to fire you instead of Pedro. It's our artistic expression, how we want to do it. Thus Disney's choice to remain associated with other actors, including Pedro Pascal, the star of the Mandalorian. <laughs> guess well, character. How does it say that there? Right. It says, it says right yeah. here. Pedro Pascal, the star of The Mandalorian, as well as Mark Hamill, the lead figure of the Star Wars franchise. They're really, they're, that's kind of, you know, salt in the wound, too. Guest character, star, lead. Yeah, that's there's a difference there. <laughs> yeah, lead but, of the entire this, franchise. <laughs> yeah. But the thing uh, is, um, what's his name? Mark Hamill was a guest character anyway. He wasn't a. 
well, no, they're saying in general, Mark Hamill is the lead figure of the entire Star Wars franchise, which is Skywalker, true. Yeah. Despite no, their no. occasional social media posts does not undercut Disney's First Amendment defense. So just because we allow Mark Hamill and Pedro to say what they want doesn't mean, you know what I mean? We can't say no to Gina. So it's interesting. So then um, there's also this footnote at the bottom. In addition, to, uh, in addition, Pascal and Hamill are integral to the Star Wars franchise. Well, as noted in the complaint, Carano never had a lead role. I can't, I'm sorry, it's my own thing is blocking me. I can't uh, see. Yeah, no, that, that thing that says slide. Is there any way to take that out? I can't even read my yeah, own. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can read it for you. Move your mouse away from it. I did. It says, the Star Wars franchise is noted in the complaint. Carano had never had any role beyond that of guest actor. Okay, so again, rubbing it in. Pedro was a big wheel. Hamill was a big wheel. Gina was just a guest actress. You know? And yep. they're, rub they're just, like you said, Max, salt in the wound. They, they, the, the word choice is intentional, I think. Absolutely. Um, so then they go, the First Amendment bars all of Gina Carano's claims. Disney had a constitutional right to dis disassociate its own artistic message from Carano's outspoken political beliefs because these claims aim to require Disney to modify the content of its expression. They cannot proceed. So again, Disney's admitting that they are expressing a message and Gina was against it. First Amendment protects Disney's decision to disassociate itself from some speech, but not from other or different speech. Again, we're allowed to do this. That's it. So that's it. All that stuff Gina talked about, the sexual discrimination, mm -hmm. the um, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, political stuff, Disney's not saying we didn't do it. They're saying we did it, and we're allowed to do it. First Amendment, right. Sticks. <laughs> Pre precedent <laughs> with these other cases, yes. So we get, we get custody of Grogu after this divorce. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. It's it's actually short. Um, very interesting. Thank you, Voltaire. Yeah, uh, very, where, it's where, very where insightful going, for for the layman, which I represent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bruce and uh, Zeno. Uh, what what happens next? So what? the court rules on this thing. There's going to be if you look up here. So when you file these things. You have to have an – yeah, that's a good question, Max. You have an oral argument in front of judges, and that's set for June 12th. June 12th. Actually, Gina gets her – her lawyers are going to respond to this before that June 12th hearing. But again, this is why court cases take so long. So they're going to file a response to this saying, no, we still state a cause of action. Uh, again, these are rarely granted. Like I'm talking like – maybe five to 10%. And usually it's when like a crazy person without an attorney files a complaint, then it gets granted without an attorney. I'm sorry. These are not, they just do these games. So, so Gina's attorneys will file a response. They go in front of the judges. They do an oral argument. Then the judges produce a decision. My prediction is the judges are going to say, we're not granting your motion to dismiss. And Disney gets to file a real answer to her complaint. Right. Okay. Then Disney will file, then a little, then the hot stuff happens. Then potentially depositions start getting taken. Uh, documents start getting produced. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. The hot stuff happens after that. So it probably will be sometime in the fall at this point when, when we figure out what's going to happen. Do, okay. you, do, you, do you think this court case could last three years, two to three years, do you reckon? Or do you think this would um, be a year? Yeah. Just a prediction. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Easily. Two years. Easily. Okay. Zeno yeah. says, Mia and me and Max are convinced they don't need to hear the other side. Good job, Voltaire. No, I, I, I we, say... We, I even said, you know, people, be consistent, Zeno. I even said Trump, Trump had every right to go to court for every single case he lost. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my personal issue with him and not in the getting the politics is when, you know, you don't accept the court ruling you got to accept what yeah happened, you know mm. that that's in exactly. that's personally why i can't support the part the man <laughs> yeah I, I i don't but, like trump so why well, I, I mean i'm that's it's not even it's not even political it's basically just not accepting 
uh, the outcomes. The rule of law. Yeah. The rule of law. The rule right? of law. Yeah. Except the yeah. rule of law. Yeah. Because every time when, like, for example, every time when Trump loses, he can't accept the facts of him losing what, what happened in court. And I find that funny. It's like, Trump, you lost. Accept it. Yeah, appeal. Yeah, that's fine too. Yeah, you, right you to have appeal. A, yes, you do have the right to appeal, but sometimes you never go. He, it Zeno's never go trying to way. trap us into another conversation. No, no, no. <laughs> no, Zeno. No. Sorry, sorry, right, Zeno. Vol, vol, Voltaire. Uh, what what else would you like? You're the you're the head of the show, so whatever you want to do, yeah. if you want to wrap it up or whatever. again. So so the I did not know that they would go this route. I thought they would just say. Though I knew that they would file this document in particular, but I thought they would a attack her actual, the factual basis for her claims. Not that they would say, yeah, we did it and we're allowed to do it. Yeah. That is what's surprising to me. That they, I also thought that their PR people, okay, would not want, again, even if they think the message is, for them to admit that there's a message they're portraying and Gina was contrary to it. I didn't think they want to admit that. Yeah. Right. Because that's always what the SJ anti SJW people, fandom menace people say they're doing a message. They're doing a message. We don't want their message. And Disney's argument was also, we're just producing content. What's with you people? No, no, no. They've admitted that they're doing, they have a message that they're trying to convey. So that was fascinating to me. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, I, I support Gina in following through. She thinks she's right. Go right ahead. I think the, I actually, before you did this stream, Voltaire, I was more confident in the Gina side with the, with the, uh, what you showed us with, in the Gina with, right. with, with the Pedro Pascal and discrimination allowing certain speech, mm -hmm. but then the angle that they went with the Disney lawyers also surprised me. It subverted what I was expecting. Like I didn't expect them to go all first amendment and they're, they're actually using uh, something similar that she would be saying. It's my first amendment, you know, so I'm, it's very interesting. Yeah. I think this is a good case for people to follow. Um, and also um, rethink your social media too, is what's worth it or not. in this day and age, it's not as bad as, it's not as bad as people say, but you you know also really think about what you're doing. Is is this benefiting me at all? Social media could be fun, but is it really benefiting me? Like I even if I wanted to express my First Amendment rights, but I would never want to put my job at risk. Like it's it was not worth. Like I don't see how this is worth it for her at all. I don't see it. even if she thinks that what she said is you know a hundred percent to her heart. Why would you risk all that? You know, no, I have no idea. It's interesting too that, um, well, again, we don't know what's in her mind. Like Colin Kaepernick, arguably, you say, well, why did he do what he did? People will say that he was benched, so he had nothing to lose. You know what I mean? Gina yeah. Carano was not benched, it's the exact opposite. She was told she was going to be, you know what I mean, given a starring role. So, she and that's your point. The best defense is saying, yeah, we did it. We're allowed to do it. It's better than saying what she's saying is wrong so we can fight against it. It's saying, yeah, 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 we did it. So what? So, so like what Gina is saying in, in her statement was like, oh, well, I was told I was offered a big time role for after The Mandalorian, but Disney just was like no. See, I, I, I thought that they were going to argue that yeah, she didn't really have the role yet. Like what I, they they dabbled in it a little bit too, so they have multiple angles. But their main, their it seems like the most aggressive thing is, is yeah, it was our right to do it. Uh, yeah. But I thought they were going to their main argument. I thought Disney's lawyers' main argument was going to be, um, you know, and the industry changes, nothing set in stone. Um, we right. don't in you know. That's I thought that's what they were going to go. And you yeah. know what? That was They decided not to. So the, no, their attorneys can't present this argument without their – right? That's why I'm surprised that this, this whole messaging thing was okay with Disney. The, the, they chose to go that route. Like that's aggressive. Well, Cal, I, I don't think you're – 
Cal, we're not like rooting for Disney to fire people. We're not, but they are. They have the right to do it. You know. I mean, I I, I said if I was in charge, I would have rehired her. Yes. Yeah, all this, just to get all this bad stuff out of like, not necessarily Those that I want to. Books. Like, it's like her character is not that intent. Like, I just would be like to the writers, like, just don't make her that important. You know. They're Who going cares? to undermine this California law, though, right? Mm -hmm. This California law was designed to protect people doing their political but, thing. But Go mind ahead. you, she was. But mind you, she was a popular character in the show, so it's like you kind of not only messed her over, but you kind of messed around the fans, if in my opinion, right? Um, like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, you're kind of, you know, messing around your fans. You're telling your fans, oh. Well, we're gonna do this stuff, and then all of a sudden you don't do it. Just like oh, like like Max said before, the James Gunn situation with uh, Henry Cavill, right? So, mm -hmm. but that's just me though. I mean, uh, Vince says he would recast though and move on. I would. Uh, I mean, if you do a recast, that's gonna ho open that would a make whole. People, that would make people more angry. Yeah, Although would, the people that aren't watching or not paying for Disney are already not doing it, so might as well. <laughs> but that would that right. would a whole that would open a whole kind of worms, basically. Basically, the fans would be like, "Well, you did this, you know, and now we're not going to support the show because that that's that's that that's my take on it." Well, I, mean, I, know, I know. I mean, it's not. I know it's not a popular opinion, but it's an opinion regardless. So Bruce's point is valid. Disney admits they have a message because Star Wars fans will watch regardless and buy all the merch and go to the parks. The Even people that yeah. complain about the message, they don't stop. Like, that was my frustration when I really went hard at Disney Voltaire is everyone else is just like, oh, yeah, I'm still going to watch it, review I'm like, well, if you <laughs> why, if you don't like it, just don't engage with it. And they wouldn't do it. They, they're obsessed with Disney. So. Well, they're upset because they love the property, you know, yeah. so. That's their whole. Thing. I'm not defending them one way or another, but as somebody, Bruce, I think I think you're you're a little naive there. I think people are truly boycotting Disney in ways they can, and all you know is, is pirating things because they don't support them. That's that's a whole other. I'm not getting into piracy, mm -hmm. but I don't like. I, I personal pet peeve of mine is that you only pirate things because of the political. Like if a a progressive person makes content. I'll watch it still, but only boy, you know, pirated. But if a conservative or and vice versa, because progressive people do that too. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. You know, I'll I'll steal because of your politics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I that really irks me. Like, okay, you know, now if you if you need to do that because you have you want to enjoy entertainment and the life in the, the world's hard out there, I'm not going to judge you for that. No, and, and, and yeah, sorry, but I, I don't like, uh, oh, I'll only pay for people with my viewpoint in the world. I'm like, oh, wow. And I, I, I know people on YouTube that do that. They only so, support, yeah. they only support the people with that think like them and they'll pirate the other side. <laughs> right. They'll pirate it. And, and, and that leads to problems, believe it or not. Like, it's kind of like, so, hey, you know, that's a big corporation. So steal from them. Who cares? You know what I mean? They have a lot of money. They're evil. You know what I mean? So I can steal whatever I want from them or I can, you know, it's just not a good, it's not how society should function, truthfully. Uh, oh, <laughs> who I was talking about just appeared in the chat. Nick, Echo Face Network. <laughs> yeah, if I was just a huge fashion star fans, I stopped watching it and not ever talk about it. Okay. Hey, Nick, That's how's it going? Will Voltaire, thank you so much for your debut. This is episode. Is this the? Is this a pilot episode? Is this episode zero? Episode one? What is this? What are you planning to do on your streams? I don't know. You don't know. If something <laughs> really gets. If something is hot and bothered, and I feel like I need to say something without getting interrupted, maybe I'll put a stream. You, are, is it possible you could potentially do a Kathy Kennedy video in the future? Well, that's possible if your channel, if that's the kind of route you want to go down. No, so, your current thoughts on her, the way, where she started, where she's at, what do you think, you know? That I think I'd, I'd need Nick for that, you know? Oh, you, oh, you can yeah. invite Nick, Nick on if you want Nick on. No, I watch their, I watch their channel. Yeah. 
Uh, no, I, that's honestly, that's what's happening out there. I, I think Bruce is naive to think that uh, boycotts. I, I used to think boycotts don't. No, boycotts are starting impacting the bottom line because profit margins are small on most most things in the entertainment industry. Don't there's very few that like there's very few Barbies or Oppenheimers or Jokers, you know, right? A lot of them are there's profits, but you know, it's slim, yeah. And, and again, eating, everybody. It's eating into the bottom line. Like we said when we did this the first time, when we're doing it this time, and, and I, I, I want to, I want, this is Max's platform. So this is credit to Max. We are not, this is dispassionately looking at everything. We dispassionately looked at her complaint with, well, you know, we tried to, di I, I, I certainly was dispassionate. Some people on the panel weren't, but you know, you, we, we look at these things dispassionately without any agenda and just look at what's being said. And that's what we did here tonight. I think we really did a good job on that. And that's my goal for people is to just look at this neutral and make your own decision on it, you know? Um, but this is what it is. Well, and great also, work, this is, Voltaire. Oh, and also this, is an this is also an education for you guys out there if you don't know about the US law. So this is kind of a learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, so Raya has the one comment she wants. There, I will, we'll, invite, we'll do Bruce and Raya, and then we'll finish up. Uh, okay. KK has KKK, KK. No, I'm just kidding. Kingdom Nerds. KK, they used to call her that. KK has the right to fire anyone she wants. And then Raya says, I think the boycott is a strong word, but social backlash and media cover, coverage on it are bad optics, optics it, that they may want to respond to. Um, I don't, you know, I, I, I think there's a legit boycott going on. Yeah. And they're responding I, I, to it. They yeah. are. They're attacking it. See, this is where I'm interested in Nick, especially I'm interested in what you have to say. Disney's admitted that they have an agenda, mm -hmm. right? They've said, we have an agenda. This is our agenda and we're doing it and we're allowed to do it. Which to be fair to the people that cry about agenda have the strongest agenda there is. <laughs> well, <no. laughs> they have their own separate agenda. It's differing agenda, but they have a huge agenda. There is too. Like that's a fair point. Yeah, uh, have wanting no agenda in your entertainment at all is also an agenda. You know, because there's, there's usually a uh, social commentary. Uh... <laughs> Come on, Cal. <laughs> I love you, Cal. But how many paps full ribbons deep are you, buddy? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Th thank you for the support, Cal. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, are you going to do your your regular uh... Uh, outro? Yeah. Good night and good luck, everyone. <laughs>